need to clear more space on my phone. Um, it's okay. Hi, guys. Happy Wednesday or Thursday. I think it's Thursday. <laughs> My days are like so jumbled up right now. Everything is just moving at such an accelerated pace for me. Um, okay, it's Thursday. It's Thursday, right? Yes, it's Thursday. Okay. Malik, what's up? My source brother. Nice to have you on here. So super excited. Um, the angels and in, in the Arcturians want to talk about magnetic manifestation. So I just kind of tuned in with them today. And I'm like, so what do you guys want to talk about? Like, what is it? And they want to talk about manifestation, but magnetic manifestation. So when it comes to manifestation, they're sort of this, um, they're telling me most people th think like now that manifestation is becoming mainstream, people typically think, oh, I'm going to do these set of activities or these rituals or these exercises, whatever it is, or these affirmations, and then I'm going to manifest something. I'm going to magnetize something to myself. I'm going to attract something into my reality. And they're like, while that is true, you are using those things to amplify your vibration. You're actually in a permanent state of manifestation. So when you're asleep, you are still in a state of manifestation because you are alive. As long as you are alive in this reality, there's always going to be something that you are drawing to yourself, right? Even when you're consciously not thinking about that which you desire or that which you are trying to create, you are in a state of manifestation. So the easiest way to actually manifest things is to amplify your vibrational set point to to move your vibrational set point up because what they're giving me is from the moment you wake up in the morning right everybody has um a general frequency that they 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 radiate right as you go through life you go through your day you go through all these different um the activities of your day there's just a set frequency that you have so when you're not doing those manifestational exercises, when you're not consciously thinking about your vibration, there's just a general vibration. They're giving me like that's your energetic signature, right? It's more so about learning to manifest on autopilot because your energetic signature is going to magnetize things that you would have never been able to consciously think about. When you elevate your vibrational set point, then the, the energetic range or the, the range of realities that you have access to expands. And so they're talking about um, if we look at the, the root word and magnetize is magnet, right? It's, it's a magnet. What does a magnet do? They're saying a magnet magnetizes things into its gravitational field right its energetic force field just based on its magnetic pull it, the magnet doesn't have to think about it it just if you're in that gravitational field you're going to be pulled into that magnet's um sphere right so they're saying all of us we are literally our own gravitational force fields whether you're consciously thinking about it or not you are uh, magnetizing things into your uh, your sign signature force field. And the things that you magnetize to yourself are going to be based on your frequency. And your frequency, they're talking about, you know, everybody, they're happy about the fact that everybody's talking about vibration and frequency. And it, like it's becoming even more of a main a mainstream thing now, even when we're like good vibes, positive vibes, right? It all it's all going back to vibration. But people don't understand how complex vibration is your your vibrational frequency, your energetic signature is a combination of so many, so many different multi layered complex things, right? It's your subconscious beliefs. They're saying it's even your physical health. It's your pat your patterns of thinking. It's who you identify as as a person. It's different childhood experiences, right? So it's it's all jumbled up. And this is what makes up our vibrational frequency, aka the rate at which literally all of our molecules are vibrating. All of our our molecules are um moving. Okay. So 
they're talking about expanding your gravitational force field. You yourself are a magnet. You yourself are your own gravitational force field. And you have your own energetic signature. What we need to do is we need to amplify your energetic signature. So as you're moving through life, whether you're consciously thinking about something or not, things are magnetizing into your field. That is literally what it means to be magnetic. And I'll give you guys an example. The way my life works now is it, it could be something so small. I go to the store and for whatever reason, at this moment in time, everything is so synchronized that when I'm in this store, maybe I meet somebody, we have a fabulous conversation, and then they're like, oh, well, I actually do this. Would you like to come to this event? Would you like to do this? And then next thing you know, you have free tickets to some concert, some art show, some whatever, right? Or um, I'll give you guys another example. I went to a grand opening. Uh, me and my boyfriend went to a, this grand opening of this restaurant in New York, it's like 101 floors above the city. This is like the the highest highest place uh, restaurant in the city, whatever. We're like, great, gonna go to this grand opening. He got invited, we go. And then we get invited to go into the VIP room. And people are like thinking that we're like celebrities or something like that, right? But it's, it's things that you can't explain. Your frequency is going to take you further than your imagination. You're going to end up places that you, you didn't even intend to be just based on being magnetic. People will gravitate to you. People will be attracted to your energy. They, they'll be like, I don't know what it is about this person, but I just want to like invite them here. Or I just want them to be a part of this. Or I want to give them these free tickets like whatever right it, it really doesn't matter when I'm hanging out in my community um like where I live I've met so many different people just hanging out at the hot tub I met a plastic surgeon my neighbor um one of my neighbors is a corporate pilot and now we're like best friends with him and his girlfriend and it's just like it's so magnetic because it's your frequency based on your frequency you're gonna attract the different versions and scenarios of, of things that can happen in your life. And what the angelics are telling me right now is um, this, magnet, this magnetism comes from two, two, two places, right? It comes from one, feeling worthy enough to have very high vibrational experiences, right? Knowing that when I go out into the world, I just deserve to have the best experiences. And they're saying so many of you, you don't yet feel like you are worthy to experience certain things. And that's what's actually blocking the flow of those things coming into your reality, right? You don't you don't feel like like it's for you. They're giving they're kind of giving me like your ide the identity that you have assumed is a character in which a character within your rea within your reality in which certain things are out of range for me. And when you start to think that certain things are out of range for you or too good for you or whatever for you, it in, literally on a vibrational level they're saying it just that those quantum possibilities are not um, available to you. They're just not available to you because you don't believe that life can be that easy, that life can be that fun. So that was the one thing, the worthiness piece. And we talked about that the other day with the Arcturian Council. Um, oh, I just lost it. What was the second thing, guys? It was that blocks magnetism or cuts off magnetism. It's going to come back. It's going to come back. Okay, there it is. Um, they're talking about simply treating life as a game and having fun. So, so many of you are like 
they're saying you're like overly invested in your reality to the point where you take every little thing seriously even when it comes to manifestation like when you're consciously trying to manifest something and you're doing your different exercises and activities you are taking it so serious so seriously to the point that you are like weakening the vibration you're weakening the vibration because you're not being lighthearted about it right the universe likes they're giving me like the universe likes when you're like fun and frisky and playful and in my life and I come from a, more of a serious career background. I've been working on Wall Street um, and in finance for eight years. And all of my colleagues have told me the same thing. You just laugh at everything. Like for someone to be in finance and to be in like the work that we do in wealth management, that can be kind of serious sometimes. You just don't seem to take anything seriously. Because in my reality, it is just a game. I'm here because I want to be here, not because I have to be here. I'm here because this is fun for me, because this is thrilling for me, because this is exciting for me. You need to get to a point where you see everything as this game that you're playing with yourself. Oh my gosh, let me just get in the highest possible frequency before I leave the house and let me just see what happens. Let me not place any expectation. Let me not get down on myself if something doesn't happen. Like if the thing that I want to happen doesn't happen, right? It's just, let me just elevate my vibe and get excited and get happy and just see what the universe can do for me. Because again, your frequency is going to take you further than your imagination. I could consciously sit here right now and I can say, oh, I would really like to experience that. And so let me try to like flow my energy to manifest that. But there are so many things out like possibilities outside of the range of what's even like what my consciousness could conjure up right now that it's way more effective to just work on becoming a magnetic attractor that we're to the point where you're manifesting on autopilot. You want to manifest on autopilot. You want to be manifesting in your sleep. You're not even thinking about it. You wake up tomorrow morning and you get that email that you were waiting for. Or somebody gives you some exciting news or something aligns to the point where it, it's totally out of your hands. Okay? So the self-worth thing is what decreases magnetism. Not believing that you are worthy to just have, to, to just experience ease and flow. The second thing was taking life too seriously, not being fun, playful, and frisky, and creating space for the universe to surprise and delight you. And then the third thing that they're giving me is the attachment, a attachment to outcomes. Um, and I love that they're bringing this up because I was having a conversation with Source this morning and I was like, everything has worked out so perfectly that I honestly just wonder what you have up your sleeve and then recognizing I have no idea what you have up your sleeve I, and being comfortable with not knowing. Be comfortable with not knowing what's going to come next. And instead of um, letting the, the unknowingness uh, create fear and anxiety and doubt, let that create excitement and inspiration and just get in this habit of I have no idea what source god the universe whatever you want to call it is going to align in my life but i just know it's going to be good and when you just affirm to yourself that it's going to be good you don't need to know the details because you just expect for it to be good so i would say that's really like a three if there were three power hacks to being magnetic it would be one knowing that I am a creator. I am worthy to experience all of the beautiful things that is possible and available to me. The second thing, I am here to have fun and play and be joyful and be in my magic. So I'm going to wake up. I'm going to be frisky. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to crack jokes. I'm going to do anything to keep myself in a lighthearted state of being. Even when things look shitty, I'm going to find a reason to laugh and play. And the third thing, I'm not going to be attached to the outcome because I know that the higher mind can see how all of these different events and, and themes and categories in my life can be synchronized in a way that I achieve my highest outcome, right? Not the outcome that to my consciousness, it seems like this should happen, 
but the highest outcome that's going to that's going to give me a combi- a wide combination of things that I would love to experience. It's all so um interconnected they're saying because we actually all have multiple soul purposes. You don't have one soul purpose that you're here to do. You actually have multiple things that you're here to do and experience and you have to surrender aka release the attachment to the outcome to allow the universe to give you all of these things at once. Not like one thing here and then another manifestation three months later. Like sometimes it might seem like something isn't happening how you want it to happen. But then when it does happen, it's going to have it's going to contain so many more pieces of what truly excites you, what truly um, just like electrifies your soul. Right. It's going to be deeply connected to your purpose. It's not just going to be the surface level manifestation of, oh, I got some money. Or I got the job that I wanted. It's going to be deeper. It's going to actually mean something to you. It's going to be not only did I get the money, but in the process, all of these other things then made sense to me on a soul level and helped me to see more of who I actually am. That is magnetic manifestation. It's not just, okay, I'm focused on making this set of money, this set amount of money, and getting this specific job and doing this specific career or building this specific building uh, business, getting this amount of followers, because then that's going to make me feel good about myself, right? When I get those things. It's no, I'm really here to experience this juicy, joyful, magnetic, playful, ridiculously, insanely epic life and everything that it's going to give me like There are so many times where honestly the universe just blows my mind and I'm just like the way you just put that together is I I would have never thought of that. I never saw that coming. That's the excitement that you're looking for, guys. You're looking for these big payoffs that are just like beyond what you can fathom. You're looking for those quantum possibilities to present themselves in ways that truly excite and delight you and when what the angelics are telling me is when we experience that like when they like rock our world they're saying that on the other side for them it's they're equally excited because this whole time they were orchestrating this great thing and so when we experience that big payoff they also experience the joy and expansion from us having that experience right it's a co-creative process source is literally in in on it with you you're not like here by yourself trying to figure it out source is like okay i i can really see how i can organize this in a way for this version of myself aka us because we are i don't want to use the word lower but just for the conversation we are lower aspects of source so source can see how from our state of consciousness what would really like knock our socks off i'm hearing like what would really just make us like oh my god this is insane and when we experience that source is just like overjoyed it's one big expansive co-creative game it's really epic and awesome but we have to get you to this frequency of magnetic attraction where you're not even thinking about it things you're just like sucking everything into your force field let me tap in with the questions and comments you guys know how i get i get into these um these source rants i call them I feel so much love for you. Thank you for delivering this message. Leslie Elizabeth, you are so welcome, dear queen. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Yes, expect the unexpected. Yes, yes, yes. That's where the excitement comes in, right? They're talking about the book, um, The Alchemist, right? And in The Alchemist, it talks about one of life's greatest joys is like the possibility of having a dream come true. What would life be if we couldn't dream and then get excited about those things actually happening. That's, that's really where all the magic is. 
let's see i have a question do you have any other account because i'm getting messages from an account with your pictures and everything saying she wants to connect with me please confirm if you have any other okay when you guys see accounts like this please block and report them okay what i have been getting on this is that this is a huge opportunity for people to um, practice using their intuition and their spiritual discernment if it doesn't feel good it's not good literally if it doesn't feel good it's not good and so some of you have fallen victim and fallen fallen prey to this type of thing and given these individuals money and then messaged me on my actual account and there's nothing I can do about it it's more so of a frequency thing so what the angelics are giving me is we implore you to use these because this is going to keep happening they're saying with not just me but so many other teachers and healers right people are going to try to exploit the spiritual community and it's our responsibility to protect the integrity of our community so if you want to protect the integrity of our community be discerning and when you see these things don't respond don't engage don't feed the energy just simply block and delete these individuals and report them so no this is my only account this is just a game. My guys always remind me of this. Yes, yes, yes. This is just a game. And now um, what they're giving me is they want to talk about the very real challenges and tribulations that we go through in this earth game experience, right? Because they're not they're not they're they're not wanting to take away from the fact that we have experiences that we experience as being real. Um, and they're saying it's all a part of your ascension process because they're saying it's, it's sort of like your higher self creates these problems just so we can solve them. They're saying even source, right? Even the fact that source has created this, this simulation game wherein we can have this experience, it gives source an opportunity to flow infinite solutions to, to come up with um questions to our answers solutions to our problems it's sort of like one big experiment they're they're giving me so when you experience something as a challenge or a tribulation in your life source immediately identifies the solution and is like oh without that contrast without that problem um we as a as a collective consciousness we wouldn't have been able to expand even further into our infinite possibility i hope that makes sense no joy in your manifestation right when there's no joy in your manifestation then it's pointless because you're simply saying i want to attract this thing i want to manifest this thing solely based on the fact that when i have it i will then feel complete which is a total illusion, um, which is why you have people who are born into extreme wealth or maybe some level of success, right? They're, they're equipped with all of these things to be successful at a, at a young age and they still end up being unhappy. It's because things in and of themselves do not generate happiness. They do not give you happiness. It's the meaning. It's more so of the soul connectivity that you have um, they're giving me like the intention behind creating the thing is what really lights your soul up. Yes, be easy about it. Angels can fly because they take themselves lightly. Love it, love it, love it. Such a great analogy. One, knowing you are a creator. Two, I'm here to have fun. This is just a game. Three, I surrender to the outcome. I set intention and let go to the rest of the universe. Yes. Perfect formula right there. The Abraham Hicks teaching is palpable. Absolutely. I love Abe. I feel like they're always in my head too. Like once you listen to them so much, they're just like with you. <laughs> 
How did you come to remember that you're Arcturian? I resonate with these cosmic origins too. Um, so for me, it, it was actually through meeting with another galactic channel. I always knew I was a star seed. I always knew something was communicating with me, but honestly, I just like identified with pure source. I was just like, oh, this is just source because I had had so many um, high level experiences. So experiencing an ego death and this came through plant medicine and psychedelics. This came through simple meditation. It came through simple realizations just for me, just sitting and then like randomly just being hit with like this source energy so i always just thought that source was communicating with me um the galactic stuff for me didn't come until later aka this year <laughs> um and it took like sitting down with a, another channel to say like hey you're actually an arcturian starseed and then from that point i was able to make my own conscious connection um, and connect with them and kind of understand my connection to the Arcturians. So it happens differently for us, right? For, for star seeds, your star seed awakening is going to happen in a way that is meant for you, that is unique to you. So I would say don't put any pressure or expectation around, around that. Okay, okay, okay. Let me see. Um, speaking of the Arcturians, let me tap in with the council right now and see if they have a message for us today. Oh, um, they're wanting to get really quantum. They want me to talk about electrons and why electrons are an important part of your multidimensionality. So, <clears throat> okay. So when we were in middle school, right? We all learned about solids, liquids, and gases, right? And we, we all learned about how they're all made up of atoms. And based on the organizational, organizational structure of those atoms, that is what makes something physical, dense, solid. Um, when, the, when the atoms start to speed up and kinetic energy builds and heats them up, then the atoms start to get separate and get more flowy and that's how we get a liquid and then further when they accelerate more that's how they separate even more and we get a gas right so these are they're just giving us a basic breakdown of kinetic energy and ele elemental quantum physics if you will and so they're saying everything that we perceive with our physical eye even ourselves right is made up of molecules the molecules contain atoms when we get into the atom then we get into really the quantum world of protons neutrons and electrons they're saying the electrons that orbit the um the nucleus represents infinite possibility because they're saying our scientists have already figured out that atoms are made up of 99 0.9% empty space, right? That that empty space is actually God's consciousness. So it means that the 1% of things that or 0.1% of things that we see in our reality is is not even um the the entirety of source energy, right? It's it's literally a very very micro small piece of matter. Everything else that we cannot perceive with the physical eye is source energy consciousness and they're talking about magic particles so what our scientists have discovered is when you it's called the observer theory when a particular participant observes these particles these electrons it actually impacts how they behave or how they respond that is literally what infinite possibility is and represents it means based on the observer based on the perceiver uh based on who who is looking at at the electrons at the molecules at the atoms they're gonna respond to that person's consciousness yes the observer method it's that's literally it <laughs> like i'm trying to like go deeper into what like what they want to give us for this but so they're saying example 
This is why none of us are living in the same reality, right? None of us are actually living on the same earth. There are infinite parallel versions of earth, of realities that we're experiencing. The earth that me, Aaron Nicole Lyons is experiencing right now is totally different from the earth that you're experiencing right now. Based on how the molecular structures, the atomic matter is going to rearrange itself to present an image or a picture that's a reflection of the frequency of my unique consciousness. Hope you guys are keeping up with this because we're getting the Arcturians love to get super quantum. So we're we're trying to get they're saying we're trying to get to the root of your being ness. Even your your physical body is a holographic picture made up of all of these molecules, atoms, electrons, etc that have organized themselves to present a certain picture. So when you look at yourself in the mirror, your eye, your eye is, the light is bouncing off of your eye and the reflection that you're seeing is your brain just organizing all of the energy into pixels that give you this look that look like you. This is why if you ever have experiences with plant medicine or psychedelics and your frequency literally rises to the point where you could just perceive energy you'll see everything as sacred geometry and I've experienced this where I looked in the mirror and my whole body was literally sacred geometry just dancing like everywhere like it was literally just energy coolest thing ever and you're like what the fuck I am literally energy they're like yeah you are literally energy your reality is literally energy you are not separate from your reality you are the reality itself what you perceive your reality to look like is the image of what your frequency looks like if frequency and vibration would look like anything it would look like the things that you are hearing and seeing in your reality you are literally translating that into a tangible frequency so when we talk about quantum manifestation and we talk about being magnetic, when you start to see things through this lens, this is what makes you magnetic. Because when you go out into the world, you're not like, oh, this is all real. You're like, this is all energy. And because this is energy, I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to mold around my vibration. This doesn't mean that uh, challenges won't present themselves. This doesn't mean that there won't be um, lessons and tribulations and things that you have to overcome, but it's all set up for your benefit. Even when you experience something as challenging, it's that, that reflection is just trying to get you to see something within your consciousness, something within your frequency that needs to change. So you can synchronize and become more of a harmonic match with source, with your true infinite nature. How can we manipulate the energy or change the frequency through meditation? So there are so many different ways to work on your frequency. It comes through just talks like this, getting you to see through certain illusions of things. You're, they're saying all of you right now, all of us participating in this transmission are, we've kind of like created this container around ourselves and are, you should even feel like you're vibrating, you should be vibrating right now. Like you should feel energetically just like more uplifted because we're vibrating higher because of the information that's coming through. It's making us more in resonance with, with source, with what is true. So through teachers, through con through consuming high vibrational information, you calibrate your vibration. They're saying through hanging around other people of a high vibration and adopting their habits and just being in their energy field, you calibrate your vibration. Through meditation, you calibrate your vibration because when you stop, when you kind of just shut everything down and you stop thinking and you just focus on your breath, in that absence of thought, there's no resistance, so the vibration is going to naturally rise, which is why every single person should be meditating every day for at least 15 minutes, period, they're saying. There's, there's no getting around that. Um, another way to calibrate our frequency, they're actually saying, is, being, is having fun and being in flow. Instead of sitting in the house, 
um, just thinking about everything that's going wrong or thinking about how you can manifest things, just go out and be present. Go do things. Go do things that's going to bring you into the present moment. Because when you're in the present moment and you're just having fun and you're not strategizing, you become a vibrational match to all of those blessings that are already set up for you. You become a magnet to them. You allow them to move into your experience. And with the fun and the flow, they're saying that there's a subconscious blockage that a lot of you have that says, if, if I take time off or a second off to simply be to just relax to to not try to like strive to get something you feel like you're losing time or you're losing um yeah like you're losing time or you're not putting in enough work or effort to get something that you want but it's actually the opposite that when you relax and you step back you actually create more movement and more momentum. Calibrating your frequency. They're saying through basic health, vibrational hygiene. Be they're wanting to take it to the basics because so many people, they love having these quantum conversations, but they're not even doing the basic things like exercising, which literally moves energy in your body, right? It's the embodiment piece. It's, it's, it's moving so that things in your life can move. How many people feel uncomfortable with like moving your body? They're saying that's because you're not in your body, you're in your mind. When you're in your mind and you're just thinking and you're straight, because they're like the ego loves to strategize, right? The ego is constantly trying to Okay, I'm going to perform this action and then, then, then do this because it's going to yield this result. And then when I get this result, then I'll be able to do X, Y, Z. And then that'll come together. And then boom, like you're strategizing to get this outcome that you think you need to be fulfilled and happy right now. So you're in your head. You're not in your body. So they're like sing, dance. They're like everybody should dance every single day, literally. And listen to music every day. How many people don't even listen to music or feel like they don't have time to listen to music? It's literally the most ridiculous thing ever. Play music in the background. When I go into my office, when I'm working my corporate Wall Street role and that business and everything that has to do with that, I have my AirPods in. And guess what? I'm listening to high vibrational content or I'm listening to music. Because that calibrates your vibration. When your vibration is calibrated, the actions that you perform are going to yield higher results. And example, they're, they're giving, they're having me talk about my kind of corporate background because it's a background that people think is like really, really serious. And as somebody who's extremely spiritual, I've made it as less serious and more playful as I possibly can. And that is what yields the results, AKA me being able to close a $7 million deal. Some people might sit there and think, no, like this is serious, it's $7 million on the table, I have to do X. My process is completely different, completely different. It's, oh, I'm actually gonna just chill out a little bit. I'm gonna align my frequency. I'm gonna listen to some music. I'm gonna be super playful. That's what's gonna make the deal get done, regardless of the amount, right? So those are the things in calibrating your vibration. They're talking about um, when, when things go wrong, this is usually when people freak out. This is when people flinch at their reality, when things start to, something, something didn't go right. It seems like something's not working out. And they're saying your higher self is going to keep, you're going to keep like running into these roadblocks until you see through the illusion of something not working out. It's the vibrational mastery they're saying that's needed. This is where true calibration uh, vibrational calibration comes from. It comes from going through the same lessons, the same challenges over and over and over again until finally something happens and you don't flinch. You don't freak out. You don't totally emotionally break down. Instead, you go immediately into, 
I know things are working out in my highest good. I might not understand this, but source, I'm giving this to you. And then you go on about your day and you still have an epic day. I personally have not experienced a bad day, what we would call a bad day in seven years. And that's out of choice. Maybe there was a bad moment, but I made a conscious decision to say, that's just one moment. In the next moment, I can totally choose a different state of being. And they're saying that's what trips people up. It's, it's not having, when you don't have con vibrational control, you don't have control over how you choose to feel. When you don't have control over how you choose to feel, or at least how you, how you respond to things, how you react to things, then you're not the creator of your reality. You just respond to reality. And they're saying it takes dedication and it takes commitment in every single moment to say, I control my state of being. No, this is not what I prefer. But I know that the outcome that I do prefer, the frequency of what I prefer, is going to be of the frequency that is in resonance with joy, love, and all of those vibrations. So let me embody that vibration now. Do, they're saying, do not wait to be happy. And this is something I keep talking about. Do not wait to be happy. Do not wait for the job that you want, the amount of income that you want, the, the partnership or marriage that you want, the body type that you want, where you want to live, what you want to have, what car you want to drive. These th if you wait for those things to be confident in who you are as a source energy being, one, they're saying it's going to weigh down on your self-worth because you're going to feel like without these things, I am nothing. And they're even saying, as starseeds and lightworkers, a lot of us signed up contractually to experience lack so we could transcend lack and then manifest from a place of true source connectivity rather than manifesting from a place of lack or needing something to fulfill us. How many times have we seen this? They're saying with celebrities, athletes, entertainers, whatever, they manifest this huge success, this huge empire. And then maybe there are issues with drugs and alcohol and all these different things because on the inside, they have not done the work. Having a lot of money and having a lot of success is totally separate from ascension. Just because you, it appears that you have a successful earth life, it has nothing to do with the evolution of your soul. So if you're listening to this, they're saying your work is that you are becoming a master. You are on the ascension path. You are not just here to manifest things to feel good about yourself. You're here to, on a mind, body, soul level, remember who you are as source and manifest from that place, which is totally different. That is a vibration that sustains. That is a vibration that is in the highest alignment, not only for yourself, but for the entire planet and all the other beings who occupy this planet. This is what it's about. This is what it's about. And this is why I don't just talk about manifestation. Like a lot of other manifestation coaches and teachers, they just talk about manifestation. I talk about everything. I talk about soul contracts. I talk about ascension. I, I talk about everything because all of it is a part of your vibration. All of it is a part of, of what you need to recognize. It's not just about manifesting that car. Like that's, you know what I mean? It's not about that. And you actually need to get to a point where you don't really care about those things. Like, I enjoy nice things. I love luxury. I love quality experiences. I always have. But I don't really care about them. I don't care about money. I don't care about... Um, I just don't care. And they're saying when you don't care, that's actually the frequency that makes you magnetic as well. Because you're not really attached your value, your, the, the value that you assign to yourself is beyond anything that you can manifest in the physical. And you will start to see when you start to manifest certain money and certain success, for a minute, you'll be excited. It's like, oh my gosh, wow. But then it doesn't really 
do anything. It was just the cookie that was dangling in front of you that your ego just wanted to get because it thought when you got it, then it was going to be, you know, this, I don't know. I don't know what we think is going to happen when we get these things. I'm telling you guys, it's much more fulfilling to be connected with source, with your true inner being, with who you really are. There's nothing that you could possibly manifest that replaces that. I'm getting tired of all of these manifestation videos and spiritual mentor guides only talking about material. Exactly. It's the Arcturians are saying 